for the union. Hello, y'all. Uh. I was selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back. But no confusion, this a reunion. Hello, y'all. Welcome back. Get murder here. He counting money. He said, can me in the hell with rap. I'm only here to shit on niggas and piss on bitches. Welcome, man. I bought jewelry and bikes, nigga. Black Benzes and white figures. Now I'm out here and I'm looking for more chandeliers and light fixtures. Nah. I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a high nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I'm looking, say, take flight, nigga. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio. Also, downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. Use code MACE, CAM, or STAT to get up to $250 in bonus cash with your first deposit and a special pick. It's the easiest way to win on Underdog. I'm Trista Crick, filling in for Treasure Wilson, along with your hosts, Mace and CAM. Thanks for having me on. How you guys doing? Killer, how you feeling, man? Gentrified up here, man. <laughs> shit. She's more gentrified by the minute, man. Right now it's two. Right, right now it's two on two. It's Nick and Tris. It's me and you, man. I like the neighborhood. <laughs> Better not get our numbers. <laughs> yeah. Not I Tris. like the food. Yeah, but Tris, thanks for filling in. We appreciate you, man. Tris is really dope, man. What were you? What were you ordering? Oh, chopped cheese, extra uh, jalapenos, mayonnaise, <laughs> toasted. Chopped cheese. I like jalapeno you cheese. You ever been to Harlem? Uh huh. Of course. Where? At? 147th and West Side Harlem. Okay, that's oh, my soul neighborhood. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I knew I knew you from somewhere. <laughs> One time I rode my bike on the West Side Highway in the middle of the pandemic and popped a rim on the West Side Highway. Had to walk my bike all the way into the closest bike shop in Harlem. Great Latin music. Ended up, uh, it was hot, hot as hell. Okay. Great stuff. Good. They, had some Cuban food. They didn't question you or try and rob you? No, they think I'm Latin. Okay, that's what I'm saying. This shit gentrified it all night. <laughs> <laughs> I was growing up, you couldn't even be seen with that complexion. Unless it was unless you was a customer. <laughs> I don't think I look like a customer. No, no, you're good today. I'm talking about talking about nineties and shit. But nah, Trish is really dope. Thank you for filling in for real though. So Thanks for all, all jokes aside, thank you. Uh we're also joined by our analyst Maurice Claret. What's up? What's going on? Mo, what's up, man? What's happening, man? What Mo, what's good, man? Yeah, Diversity. oh my God, he got yeah. the Diversity. <laughs> Diversity, yeah, see? Step yeah. back, Mo, yeah. let me see yeah. this shirt again. Yeah. Mo be on yeah. point every fucking week, man. <laughs> every week, man, Diversity. We back in the lead. I forgot Mo yeah. was on today. <laughs> the three, two. <laughs> yeah, Mo. Mo, what's good? How you been? All, all is well, man. The week has been good. So I actually stayed true to the whole diversity. Nick helped me with the notes. So that's the white connection. Okay. I have a white dude pick up the shirt for me. All right. That's two. And I've been with my white business partners all week. So diversity. <laughs> it's right. been a real diverse week for all of us. We appreciate you uh, for <laughs> keeping us included. Nah, that's what's up, man. I yeah. miss you more. I'll be back this week, man. All right. Let's get into the... Yeah, was... Go ahead. No, nah, I was just making jokes. They was beat me up last week. I didn't have a haircut, and I was, um, you know, down in Florida. So I just want to let y'all know for the comments, I got fresh again, so we good. Yeah, Mo was brushing his hair right before, pretty much for five, ten minutes right before we went on. I think he was probably tired of getting roasted. Um, speaking of yeah. <laughs> players that were getting roasted, the hot topic generating some NBA buzz, uh, Bronny James had his first best summer, summer league performance with 12 points, nine in the first half. Five for 11 from the field, two for three from deep. One of which of those threes was to tie the game in clutch time. And then last night, Bronny followed up with 13 points, five for 10 shooting. The Lakers actually won both of those games. Um, after those two performances, Bronny is now the most bet player to win rookie of the year. What are your guys' thoughts? Mo, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> She's trolling. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Welcome to the family, Trish. <laughs> yeah, I, on a personal note, I was very happy for Bronny, right? Um, everybody in the world, y'all know he's the he's the topic of discussion 
And the reason I was happy for him because like it made me think of when I started this show, right? And when I started this show, you don't know how you're going to fit in or how you're going to perform or how you basically pause, how you're basically going to find your way on a platform with people who have bigger names, uh, who are who have some sort of expectation from you. And you're just looking for one thing to go right in order for you to build your confidence. And when I seen him play, like I was just thinking back to myself when I was playing football or just in my younger years, like when you start the season, you just looking for one thing to go right. Or when an athlete gets a, a pass to get himself into the groove of the game, he gets a dunk. And this is like his his moment where he builds confidence. And so now I know he's probably been practicing a bunch with his father. He's probably had, you know, J.J. Reddick bringing him to his office, talking about, hey, man, this is where you find your jump shots. These are a couple spots on the floor where you can find yourself on the floor. And like, I was just happy that it actually clicked for him because I think this is something that he can build off of. I think that like anybody else, he has a smartphone. He has people that, you know, talk to him. He probably looks at direct messages the whole nine. He's probably heard all the criticism from everybody. He could have been buying into it or believing it at some point. But when you have a good game or you do something that, you know, reminds you that, hey, man, I do belong or I do have like some sort of skill set to build on. Like I was happy for him for that. And um, he can he can now get out of like the, the two, three week long comments of them saying like, hey, he's a bad player and he doesn't belong. And I just think that this is what you need to do to change the narrative. And I hopefully that he's been internalizing, you know, all the things that everybody's been saying and using it for motivation. Yeah, I would I would say um, very briefly when it comes to um, Bronny James. I really hope this goes well for him. The pressure seemed to be like insurmountable for him. And um, when this game first started, Ronnie comes off the curl and hit a seven foot, you know, jump shot. And then it looked like his confidence like instantly took off from there. I mean, because he was he was way lower than zero confidence. And then he went on later to say that his dad and his mom is his support system, which I'm not surprised of. But then he made a statement at the end that really had me really concerned, which is he got to stay sane. And, and he said it with a smile on his face. But, you know, when somebody's smiling, but it doesn't seem like they're happy. That's what, that's how it came across to me that this smile could internally mean that he's he's mentally not ready for the NBA. That's that's just was my perception. I don't want to say a bunch of negative things about him, but that is definitely something that we got to start paying attention that his mental, because when you've been given everything and everything has come so easy and I'm not going to say so easy, but very easy. You, you, you had the greatest of everything given to you and yeah, you did some work, but you had the best trainer, the best strength and condition, the best shooter, the best, you know, school, the best sneakers, just, just everything, the best then it is some pressure for you to be the best because you had the best of everything. And I think that's that's weighing on his brain. What you think, Cam? Yeah, Trish, you tell us what you think. I think it would be better if Bronny wasn't playing on the Lakers, truthfully. Like, if he would have gone to the Suns or any other team and not be just intrinsically linked to LeBron over and over and over again, that would have felt better to me, no matter where he would have been drafted. Then I would have known that it wasn't finessed by you know, the power play that is LeBron. And LeBron should do that if that's what he thinks is best, right? He's the top priority and he's in a free agent season. And I don't think that was ever a mistake. And so he kind of forced his way into Bronny not being on a two-way and having a guaranteed deal. And that, I think, adds pressure to Bronny that is unfair. It's a great opportunity. Nepotism's normal in every facet of business. But I think that might be weighing on Bronny a bit. Well, sorry to break the news to so you. Wouldn't be in the NBA if no, if, if it wasn't for the Lakers. I don't think he would have got drafted at all. To be totally honest with you, uh, he didn't play last year. He averaged like five points. We know he went through a medical condition, which is very serious. But nobody gets this type of treatment if you're not LeBron James's son. Mo, he couldn't have been practicing with LeBron. LeBron, right? I mean, over the years. LeBron's doing Olympic shit now. Is he calling LeBron? And is for LeBron calling him? Yeah, man, I know you on your Ohio shit. I usually be on this Ohio shit with you, but we got to stop certain shit, bro. We got certain shit we just got to stop, Thank my you, nigga. Thank you, Killer. We got... Kill us home! Yeah, nah, Kill us home! We got to stop certain shit. LeBron is in the Olympics. He got to worry about that now. Is he calling him, telling him to play? Yeah. 
That's a fact. But what I will say is this. I didn't watch the game because the first however many games that's been going on led me to say, okay, I have this to do today. Or I can watch this. I got to go do this. I'll catch the highlights. From, but, but from the highlights, it looked really good. And you got to realize this. He did go against Imani Bates. Imani Bates shot terribly. I seen him cook Imani Bates, too, on the play. Shook the shit out of Imani Bates. And Imani Bates shot, what, three for 14, I believe. Bronny was 50% mm -hmm. from the field. This was a positive game for him. Let's see if it continues. But this one game. Um, and maybe he is gaining some, some momentum. We'll see. But uh, as far as, like, Mo, that's another thing you said I didn't like. You was like, you know, him playing against other other popular names. What more popular name in the draft this year, Mo, than it was Bronny? He's the most popular name in the whole draft this year, whether yeah. he's the best player or not the best player. Cut that shit out, Mo. I'm telling you now, man. <laughs> I fuck with Bronny and, and Rich Paul. You know, that's my brothers <laughs> and Maverick and, and LeBron. I'm all my brother brothers. You know, I'm Columbus, Ohio. But we got to cut the shit. What famous names you talk about in this year's draft, Mo? Bronny is the most famous <laughs> name in this year's draft. God, God my bad. You guys, who's the most famous name in the draft this year? Pardon me if I missed him. No, by far, Bronny's the, the most famous name. I'm talking about he probably just been with his father over the years, whether they working out, whether they going to play okay. in any gym. He's probably played with Chris Paul, Carmelo, all those dudes okay. over the years, right? right? So I'm pretty sure just through recreation, he's played with them, he's scored with them. And he's done things that they've probably seen and say, okay, like Bronny has some talent, but whatever he has, it hasn't transferred to like the preseason and him having success in the summer league. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I was saying like him scoring him scoring those 12 or 13 points, he's probably said to himself, when I played pick up with my father or when I played around other professionals, even though it probably wasn't an intense game moment, like I know I can do this. And so... I reference myself to like, like just to show it's like you look for one thing to give yourself confidence to say, I can do this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying with him, I'm like, I'm pretty sure he was looking for his moment. And this may have been his moment. I do agree with Tris because I've thought that as well, too. I do agree he probably wouldn't be in the NBA right now if it wasn't for LeBron. But I do think that his NBA experience would be different if he was on his own. And if that makes any sense. But I just wanted to say that, Tris, I do kind of understand where you're coming from with that. Given that, Mo, like in the expectations on Bronny, what do you think a successful rookie of the year looks like? Um, just being on a team. Like, I, I don't expect nothing else from him. I don't expect him to put him in for garbage time. I don't expect none of that outside of the first two or three games or you might see him on the court for a second. But successful to me for him, and this probably goes a little bit further just to, like, to what May said, his personal life, I don't think that you can put him out on the floor right now with all the pressure, all the expectations. I think you need other stories and other major things to happen in sports to like bury, not bury him, but bury the story. And he doesn't feel like every time he steps on the court that he has to perform or score 20. Uh, so just being on the team, being around his father, learn how to be a pro, learn how to be a pro. Uh, to me, that's what success looks like for Bronny. Yeah, why one question I had that I keep thinking about every time I see Bronny plays, as soon as the Lakers come out, I wonder why I did not hear any of the great Lakers say congratulations. With Bronny coming on to the Lakers, you would think you've heard a big spill from Magic Johnson, Kareem, um, Byron Scott, Michael Cooper. You just go down the list. Um was um Clay Thompson's dad, you know, Michael Thompson. I haven't heard any of them say congratulations. And you would think this is like a nation. But Magic had that iconic Magic Johnson tweet. Congratulations to Bronny James on being drafted by the L.A. Lakers. A historic moment because LeBron and Bronny are the first father-son duo to play in the NBA at the same time and on the same team. Watching Bronny suit up for the Lakers during Summer League in Vegas will be must-see TV. That was probably A.I., well, <laughs> I thought she had, I thought she had called me on the car. The killer, killer said she was drunk. I said, oh, what am I going to say to this? That was AI, yeah. nigga. <laughs> she asked a great question. What does a rookie of the year look like? Allen Iverson. Yeah. LeBron James. Kevin Durant. Derrick Rose. Even my boy <laughs> that was smoking weed from the Kings. What was it? Tyrese. Luka Dantich, 
as uh, as we know what a we know what a rookie of the year looks Evans. like. Oh, Tyreek Evans. Yeah. Tyreek yeah. Evans. We know what a rookie of the year looks like. If you, you know what Tyreek so. Evans was up to, don't you? <laughs> but I, let me ask everybody this question before we move on, real quick. All three of you, would 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 Bronny be in the NBA if Kobe was his father? Do you think Kobe would allow this? No. Why not? No. Kobe's about earning everything. I mean, Kobe sees bad work ethic immediately, and I think he would, like, disown a kid <laughs> <laughs> if he was trying to get off on some nepotism. No chance. Yeah, Kobe might not play the nepotism game. No. <laughs> yeah, Kobe would have let him come in the arena by himself. <laughs> what, what do you think, Mace? Yeah, I, I think if if um Kobe was his dad, Kobe would have definitely... Um, Kobe would have cussed him out. Would Kobe, would Kobe allow this? <laughs> would he be in that? hundred percent not. <laughs> would he force Co Rob Palenka to make sure that his son landed on his team? And what, no. do, you, what do you think, Mo? Uh, no, not at all. But what are you talking about from two different perspectives? Like, it, it both talented LeBron and Kobe, but LeBron is more business-oriented and no, I, said I asked before, you a I question. This. Here we go with the Ohio <laughs> shit. I asked you one question. I didn't <laughs> ask you about no, business orientated. No. <laughs> I did not ask you who's a more people person. I didn't ask you about who's who's more likable. If, if Kobe was this man's father, no. would Kobe allow this? That's it. Trust me, I want to do the Ohio no. thing. I want to do it, nigga. But I got a job to do. <laughs> Rich, Rich know this. <laughs> No. All right. He thank wouldn't you. do it. All right. All right. We'll move on then. <laughs> we won't let any more of that go. Uh, so yesterday, the Clippers traded Russell Westbrook to the Jazz, which is, by the way, his second time on the Jazz. He's played zero times on the Jazz, not a single game. Uh, for a second round pick, Cash and Chris Dunn, the Jazz are now expected to waive Russ, who will then sign with the Denver Nuggets on a vet minimum. Russ was 13 for 50. 13 for 50. Wow in the playoffs against the Mavs, what do you guys think about the fit between Russ and the Nuggets? And do you think that Russ has anything left in the tank? Mo, what's up? Yeah, I definitely believe he has um, something in the tank, you know, pause, uh, that he can come and be, you know, a part of their second team. And he's obviously at the stage of his career where he's like, hey, man, let me join these guys. Uh, let me go chase a ring. I didn't accomplish it or get it done uh, with the L.A. guys over in, um, with the Clippers. So I just think respectfully, when I kind of read up on the article, you know, they sent him to a place that he wanted to go and he wanted to land. And I think it's for the purpose of uh, chasing a championship. So uh, I, I wish him well. I still think that he's talented. Um, you know, obviously when you have uh, all of the low management and you have other superstars who can facilitate and do some of the stuff that you used to do in your younger years, uh, he can definitely contribute. Uh, but I think I've, I've heard Cam said a bunch when he just talk about, you know, people at the end of their careers and they become journeymen and, you know, you end up on 55 teams before you're done and, and people kind of forget your legacy just because the end of your career was more about you being bounced around. And I hope that he can uh, at some point get a championship and then people remember all the good stuff that he's done uh, back in OKC and everywhere else. Yeah, I think I think for Russell Westbrook, he'll play much better on Denver. Um, I know. Tristan, she she um, Tristan. Ma Trish made notice of the thirteen out of fifty. But when you're getting the ball from James Harden with with four seconds on the clock, the you're getting the ball at twenty twenty seconds on the clock, and you and you just got the ball from um Kawhi. He was just getting the ball pretty much paused but in a lot of bad locations and a lot of bad timing. You know, somebody dribbled the clock out and give you the ball <laughs> with two seconds, and you got to force a shot up, it's going to be much different because of the spacing is better on Denver, and the way they're going to play is going to be more team-like. So I think he'll he'll be even a, a better fit for them than he was at um, the Clippers. But um, I hope he win a ring. I think, I think with him on that team, they have a better potential to win a ring. All they was missing was some fire. From from the second guard, and and this gives them that. I don't think Russ will be playing a lot of point guard. He, even though he's at the two, they'll have him bringing up the ball, and they'll have um Murray getting baskets. So I think with the ball in his hand, 
you'll even see flares of the old Russell Westbrook getting triple doubles and things like that, especially with somebody like Joker. What do you think, Kim? Go ahead, Tris. Man, I love Russ, honestly. Um, I'm a fan. I love the physicality. I hope he has something left in the tank. The thing about Denver is, to me, and I want to hear you guys and what you think, it feels like the Nuggets are like the L.A. Lakers on tape delay. Like, you know, you win a championship. The the roster starts to slowly diminish. The GM starts letting key guys go. You let go of KCP, and then you bring in Russ. It's the same blueprint. You know, at least they got him on a vet minimum. I think that Russ can step in for Aaron Gordon when Aaron Gordon is sitting in that, like, dunker spot, you know? I don't think he's as suited as a guard right now in this in his period of his career. I think Jokic to, to Russ will be one hell of a duo, but I don't think a championship is coming for Denver anytime soon. I like Russ, man. I really do. They can't, he like, it ain't, and I, I'm not saying it's his fault, because listen, we ought to think about this. He has the most triple doubles in NBA history. This is like over Magic Johnson and Oscar Robinson and all type yeah. of niggas. Like, he has the most triple doubles in NBA history. And the nigga on his team is in fourth place with the most triple doubles. Yo, uh, the Joker has 130, I believe. And I think Russ has 181, if I'm not mistaken. But I feel bad because Russ, where he goes, you know, he could be a superstar at times or he could be a role player at times. And it don't work with nothing. It don't work nowhere with Russ. It just don't work. This is third team in like 18 months. Like, bro, I just feel bad because even last year with the Clippers, this nigga was the one before um, Ty Lue even said it, that he'll take the bench. He'll come off the bench before Ty, even Lue, before Ty, Lee, Ty Lue even had to make a decision. And I respect that from him because, you know, he's an all-star at times, and he could be a superstar at times. Is he still a superstar? That has to be seen. I'm not sure because I do believe he's chasing the championship as well. I think this is a great move for Denver, being that uh, uh, Bruce Brown is gone, KCP is gone. Their first-round pick just got injured. Uh, but does it equal a championship? I don't know. I don't know if he fits in that system. Uh, I really have no idea. I really hope it works out. I don't, I'm sitting there trying to think of nice things to say about Russ because... I fuck with the nigga, but it just don't seem to work anywhere that he goes. And he's been around. Look, think about this. Last year, we had four potential Hall of Famers on the Clippers. It's, it's Paul George, Russell, Kawhi, and James Harden. And the shit didn't work out. Didn't work out with him and KD and um, OKC. Didn't work out when he went to Houston with uh, James Harden. We knew it wasn't going to work out in Washington with the Wizards. The shit just never works out over there. Uh, it just didn't work out. Um, and I really wish that he would get with a team that could get him uh, at least back to a championship because I fuck with him. But I have to agree with Tris. Does this seem like the recipe for them to get back to a championship? I don't think so. Because when it comes to KCP and Bruce Brown, and I'm not sure about the first-round draft pick they got, they were more role players. And when we see Russell Westbrook as a role player, I, I don't necessarily like it. Because he was kind of Ja Morant before Ja Morant. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's how we still look at him. So when he's trying to be pass passive and I'll be like, Russ is explosive. Don't be, you know, when the nigga try to pass to you gently. Like, yo, <laughs> yo my nigga, you a wild nigga. <laughs> you know, niggas is trying to fit in and he's on the, on the sideline yeah. cheering and all that. And I'll be like, I dig it. You trying to be a good teammate, my nigga. But that ain't the Russell Westbrook that I uh, grew up. Not grew up because he's younger than me. Um, Got accustomed to seeing. So I hope it works out. And I like Denver a lot. But I have to agree with Trish. Y'all niggas don't want to pay. Y'all niggas letting Bruce Brown go. Y'all niggas like KCP go. Dumb niggas is it was key pieces to y'all championship. And more importantly, Bruce Brown, because you see what happened last year when he didn't play with y'all niggas. Now, don't get it fucked up. That nigga, we seen the emergence of Ant-Man. You know what I'm saying? That, that might have something to do with it. But Bruce Brown was really a key piece coming off that bench. I don't think this equals anything for Denver getting back to the championship. I like Denver a lot. Hopefully they do because I, I like to see them play. But I don't think adding Russ is going to put them over the top. Well, and the issue, too, is Calvin Booth was talking smack about 
Bruce Brown, and then this, and lost him, said basically we've got another guy, a young guy that comes in, more athletic. Let the audience know who Calvin Booth is. Calvin Booth, GM of the Denver Nuggets, mm-hmm. comes in and says, hey, we don't need Bruce Brown. He can go. And he went, and they got worse. And now he comes out, talks smack about KCP, basically says, hey, we don't need KCP. If we move on without him, all good. And then KCP took the exact same money that Denver offered him. He's like, oh, you're good without me? We're going to see. Yeah, but see, <laughs> let's think about this too. Who was the GM when the, when everybody was there? When they when they picked up... Tim Connolly. Exactly. Who's he GM now? Minnesota. Exactly. He built a team together. He put a team together on Minnesota to take out the Denver Nuggets. Meanwhile, while the mm-hmm. Denver Nuggets team... The Devin Nuggets GM is stubborn and hard-headed. Tim Conley said, I know who I put on this team. Now I know who I got to put on this team to beat y'all niggas. And he did it kind of quick, too. Pause. Yeah, y'all talking about consistency. <laughs> it seemed like Utah keep reneging on Russell Westbrook. This is the second time he got traded to Utah and they and they let him be bought out. But, you know, he might be telling niggas, so you could try it if you want. <laughs> you could try it if you want, nigga. I'm not showing up, nigga. You might as well figure this out now. <laughs> well, remember, Utah was the place that Russ got into it with a fan, where the fan was calling him all kinds of racial slurs. So I don't think Russ would ever be a fit yeah. um, with the Utah Jazz. Yeah. Uh, oh, let me say they called him a nigga. <laughs> yeah, no she trick. said slurs. She can't call, say it. Yeah, no, no, no matter how much chopped cheese, <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to happen. They called him Russ a nigga. I got you, Tris. It was a hard ER, though. <laughs> it was a hard nigga. Yeah, it's a hard ER. <laughs> All right, let's move in. Speaking of the hard ER, the reviews are in for the new Donald Sterling Clipper show. What a transition. And they are mixed. Which got me thinking about movies and shows. My favorite sports movie of all time is not going to be a surprise. Uh, it's Love and Basketball. Like, that's just what it was. You know, that was the end. Storybook ending. <laughs> we women playing basketball all had. Um, but I wanted to know what you guys' GOAT sports movie or show is. Uh, what are your thoughts, Mo? It, uh, it's, it's not one show. It's like a series of shows. But the, the, the most enjoyable show, my favorite show, is All Access. And um, it's like the parallels of I think like if you came if you just came up came from the hood, or if you came up in music, came up in sports, or just how they follow the boxers, I always find it intriguing like their backstories and just everything that they did before they got to like some significant fight. Like I just always enjoyed uh, that. It, it was between that and uh, I don't know if this is really a sports show, uh, but I, I liked Higher Learning and they had an element of tracking it with Omar Epps. Uh, I'm not really sure if that was a, a sports show, but those yeah, that two, wasn't like, no sports show, that- Mo. <laughs> Higher learning was racist, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why you wilding, Mo? <laughs> well, he keep, was running keep track, cooking, though. Keep cooking, Mo. <laughs> 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 no, nah, but I enjoy All Access. All Access is probably my favorite sports show. Yeah, um, All Access. Is that the same as 24-7? They changed it from yeah, 24-7 they changed- to All Access. Yeah, twenty four seven was dope, and and all access. My one of my favorite um basketball movies was um, what was that Above the Rim with Tupac? Mm-hmm. That was one of my yeah. favorite Above the Rim. But if I was talking about a show or or a movie, I would say Come Fly with Me, because after Joy made Come Fly with Me, I've never met anybody that watched this movie that didn't go outside and play basketball right away. I'm so mad you said love and basketball because <laughs> I've never seen love and basketball and me and Sin argue twice a week that he wants me to see love and basketball. He says, Cam, how don't you see love and basketball? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not watching love and basketball. And he, it's just a fight. Like, like if we accumulated the hours per week of him trying to get me to watch love and basketball, it might add up to like 12 hours per week of why I'm not watching Love and Basketball. First of all, I'm not watching no basketball movie where the star cannot play basketball. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> I don't, I'm not watching a nigga where he, may, he dribbled once and then the next scene he just in the air like this. White man can't jump. <laughs> he, he just, I can't watch that. I can't fuck with it. You know, like even above the rim, at least the nigga had a little ha, 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 ha. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I can't watch, I can't watch the, I cannot watch a movie where a nigga do a move and 
the camera go to the crowd, and the next thing he's just hanging on the rim like, <laughs> I'm not doing that, my nigga. I can't. I don't care how good the storyline is. You got to get a nigga that knows how to play basketball. I just can't do it. If you're asking me my two favorite sports movies or shows, is, is, or you're asking my favorite, it's actually two. I'm going to go with The Last Dance. The Last Dance came on at a key time during the pandemic. It was no sports on. We, ESPN was about to show dice games in a minute because shit was not going on. The <laughs> pandemic was happening. And then, bam, The Last Dance fucking comes on. And it's fucking amazing. Ten shows. Uh, we get to see shit about Michael Jordan. I'm a Michael Jordan fan. Grew up watching him. Um, shit about him. We already knew the nigga was fucking a bug out. But you get to see how much of a bug out he is. And when I say a bug out, <clears throat> how much he wants to win. And that's why I kind of asked the Kobe Bryant question earlier because Kobe's a bug out. God bless the dead. Nothing bad when I mean, I mean that. Them very, when it's, the, a better word so y'all understand me is intense when it comes to winning. Those niggas is intense. And that was a great time to put out the last years. But my number one sports show, movie, whatever you want to call it, ever is Hoop Dreams. Mm. Hoop Dreams is fucking amazing, my yeah. nigga. If y'all people have never seen Hoop Dreams, make sure you get a chance to go see Hoop Dreams. Hoop Dreams is probably the first reality show ever. A lot yeah. of people don't even look at it like that. This is probably the first reality show. Whether I'm not just talking about basketball. I'm talking about anything reality show. It's based upon two kids out of Chicago who are trying to get to the NBA, but whoever... Uh, wrote and directed this movie, I can't think off the top of my head, had a vision and they were smart. They followed these kids from ninth grade to 12th grade from 1988 to 1992 and you get to see everything behind the scenes, how they own welfare, how they lived in Cabrini Green in the project. Somebody else lived, on, the other kid lived on the west side of Chicago. One of the kids' father, Arthur A.G., was on crack. You see him buying crack. You see the mother, mm -hmm. uh, welfare checks was probably, I think she said $214 a month. She had three kids at the time. Their lights went out. They were in the house with candles. Meanwhile, these kids are going to school. They're getting robbed. It was just an excellent movie. And you actually see them grow up in the movie from ninth to 12th grade. Uh, one of the kids ended up going to junior college. The other kid went to Marquette. But it was phenomenal. That's my favorite uh, movie, Hoop Dream. I haven't seen it, but it makes my love in basketball seem kind of trivial yeah like yeah yeah who dreams that, that shit turned into legos like nerf you got watch, you go watch who dreams when you get a chance you'll love it though mo uh speaking of that what athlete do you think should get the next last dance treatment this was uh and i don't know this is kind of personal uh i want to see an in-depth look at uh carmelo anthony uh pause but I just remembered, you know, we all, we all, yeah, yeah, that we, was we all crazy. the same age. <laughs> what an end up. <laughs> Look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you want, Mo. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, was, <laughs> I was like, I, I was just trying. I, I, you get what I'm coming from. I was hoping that you know him and LeBron came up at the same time, mm -hmm. and you know he went to Syracuse's freshman year. That was my freshman year at Ohio State, and a lot of his career, I don't want to say overshadowed by LeBron, but a lot of his the, the earlier years they were they were overshadowed in and like. I just don't think like people realize how special he was. And I guess I probably paid attention more to him and LeBron because we all around the same age. Uh, but I've just like, you know, 30 for 30s used to be a thing and people would go in depth and talk about their stories and, you know, you would figure out and find out more about them. But like, if I, if I wanted to sit down and a person I used to enjoy watch playing basketball and I enjoyed his career in Denver and everywhere else that he went. And I even liked the thing that he's doing uh, with the dude, the, the 7 PM in Brooklyn show that he's doing. Um, I would like to see, like, just say uh, a documentary or a storytelling of some sorts of uh, just his story. Because, like, I don't know, like, I know I think he's from Baltimore, but it's a lot that he affiliates himself with New York. So I don't know which one he's from, you know what I'm saying? But I would just like to hear his whole story, you know, just in an in-depth uh, capacity. Yeah. I, um, when they come to athletes, I think one one athlete, there's a lot of stories about 
It doesn't seem like anybody really knows him. Um, they say he was better than Jordan, but he never really got to play in the NBA, and that's slim bias. I would, I would definitely love to see a, a in-depth um, story about him because it seemed like people had so much to say about him. I, I didn't have the opportunity to see him play a lot. But when you hear people say he was better at Jordan and then he makes it to the league and get high and get and commit and, and get an overdose, you know, the day the day after getting signed. Oh shit. Sorry, Marvin. Yeah, getting the overdose the day after. Sorry about that. Yeah. Overdosing the day after being drafted is is a is a crazy story. So and then you see a lot of people win his number and different things like that, Kevin Durant and different people. So I definitely will want to know more about that story. That's a good one. Man, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I'm a little disappointed that y'all didn't say the greatest show, the greatest movie of all time is Club of Lang. Rocky, Ivan, right? I, Ivan nobody Dragos. said nobody said Come Rocky. Come on, man, Rock, Rocky. Y'all didn't pick Rocky? <laughs> you ever see Who Dreams? Who Dreams? Who Dreams? Who Dreams? Who Very real. Rocky. Rocky. Very real. Maybe I just like that real Yo, shit. Now, <laughs> nah, Rocky is crazy. I mean, yeah, Rocky was crazy. Well, Rocky had trilogy. I, like, I don't fuck with Rocky after Club Rocky 3. <laughs> after Rocky 3. Club maybe like Rocky 4. Because you know why? And, I, and I'm not mad at the nigga. I'm not mad at the nigga. Uh, the nigga. Um, Who, Tom, Sylvester, Tommy? Sylvester, <laughs> no, Sylvester Stallone. But. That's, ain't he a nigga that know how to milk the system? I just said, wasn't this a Rambo out last year? I'm not mm-hmm. watching the Rambo. <laughs> Rambo came out in 1979. How he still out here fucking niggas up? I'm not watching. I talked to Sid about this too. I'm not watching the new Rambo. I'm just not doing that, man. I'm just not. But I do fuck with Rocky after Rocky IV. I'm just not doing it. But, you know. I, went, I was talking about one and two. I was talking about Club of Lang and... If he Club dies, he dies. not in one or two, Larry. You don't even know what you talk about. Who, who, who Apollo's in one and two. Oh, Club my, of Lang is three. I'm sorry, sorry, my bad. And then Apollo Dragon, yeah, you don't Apollo even know what you like, nigga. My bad, my bad. Try to jump scared. in here and don't even know what you're talking about. Apollo and Ivan Dragos. Yeah. Those yeah. are the three. Come on, man. Yo, maybe you got to watch Who Dreams again. That should come on right now, man. <laughs> Who I, dreams yo, deep. my nigga, it's a deep, it's deep, and it's it's fucking and it's real, it's real. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I wasn't a kid. You got realize Rocky three came out when I was six, so yeah. mm-hmm. I wasn't even born. I don't think for the first Rocky one. So I'm not knocking you. I liked it, but if you watch Hoop Dreams, man, that shit is that shit is, is cringy at certain parts of the movie. Like yo, and then at the same time, we grew up in that shit. That's right. We actually grew up in that same environment that those kids grew up in in Chicago. To me, Chicago is so compar- um, so parallel to New York, not just as far as people, but as far as um, landscape, subways, yeah. trains, skyscrapers, uptown, downtown, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, East side. Right. West side. And everybody that we grew up with had a hoop dream. Right. So that was, that was definitely right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was dangerous. They yeah. kind of taught us what not to do. Right. I don't know if anybody's, if anybody is, uh, if anybody's um, worthy of 10 episodes to answer the question, but I would like to see something on Ronnie Fields. Uh, that was like Kevin Garnett's high school mm. teammate, and they saying he's supposed to be like the next Jordan, et cetera, et cetera, this, that, and the third. And um, he just, he from the highlights, he was amazing, but he got into a car accident. And this uh, career never panned out to be what it was. All right. Well, we're going to go to break. When we return, we'll discuss why professional athletes keep making the same mistake over and over and over again. I'm talking about Trayvon Diggs and his baby mama. Don't go anywhere. She called this thing about was toxic Four years and counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free Why am I in this one? 
All right, welcome back. It's time to go over our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Let's go to the NBA. Underdog has 39-year-old LeBron James. Season-long points set at 25.7 points per game this year. Mace, do you have it higher or lower? Lower. Cam? Higher. Anthony Davis ain't taking this team over. Speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of which, underdog has Anthony Davis season long rebounds at twelve point one rebounds per game. Do you have it higher or lower, Mace? It's Cam go. Yeah, lower. Lower. I don't know, man. LeBron's his longevity is pretty damn good. Feels like you're right. Anthony Davis is going to be able to be able to get the production. Not with uh, JJ Redick saying that they're putting up. Top five threes per game. Um, hmm. Also, Mo has a personal question for the guys. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I had two questions, but I'm going to go with the question that's kind of like in the spirit of the show. And I know you talked about Ronnie Fields, Cam, and yeah. uh, like there's just people who, um, you know, had the ability to be probably better than the person who ended up making it from the era. Uh, but I was just thinking to myself, was this somebody that y'all came up with through the music scene, right? Sometimes athletes get hurt, they get injured or whatever. But is it somebody who had like skills and talents and but for whatever reason that, you know, they just didn't make it for whatever reason? Good question. And it was just, uh, just a random question. That's a great question. Mason don't give nobody credit. He's <laughs> 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 like, I don't even know a nigga like this. <laughs> He's like, can't call it. Um, <laughs> what I will say is this. It's, it's, it's a guy, and I'll, I'll pick this. It's, it's a lot of people in Harlem. Yeah. A lot of great people in Harlem. Well, and we, we went through this on yeah. Billy and Wallow's show and other people's show. It's a lot of great people in Harlem. But what I'll say is this to me, and this is a strong statement, uh, I lived in Chicago, and to me, they may have the best lyricists. Them in Louisiana. I'm talking about as far as lyricists. Like, we don't, yeah. we really take for granted because um, now, you know, New York used to call people country or West Coast, whatever it was, not my era, like in the 80s and yeah. early 90s, and then respect it. But, you know, even thinking about Lil Wayne, if you get on record with Lil Wayne, you got to be careful. You have to, the Lil Wayne will go crazy. You're on record with Eminem. Y'all be careful. You know, these niggas are really lyricists. So it's a guy who passed away. His name was Frog from Chicago on the West Side. Shout out to everybody on the West Side of Chicago, K-Town. I actually, my man Twister posted a picture of me, him the day when I was actually in Chicago with them. But he was really, really good. He's from K-Town. Shout out to my guy Duke. And they were fucking amazing. I think, you know, even though I had a deal when I was living up there, I used to get in the ciphers and rap with, like fucking, like I didn't have a deal because they were really hungry and they kind of pushed the envelope. Also a dude named Young Buck, not the one that was down with G on it. Uh, he was from Chicago. He's actually, me, him, and Twister actually have a song together. Um, damn, was it Go-Getters, the name of his crew? I can't remember, but he was really nice too. You want to Google the record, it's called Adrenaline Rush too, me, Twister, and uh, Young Buck. But I think Chicago artists are really, really underrated as far as, uh, rap is concerned. So RP Frog. Um, yeah. Um, we yeah, we did talk about this on Gillian Wallow. There's so many people I think from Harlem that was really, really good. You got you got Trooper J, you got Mike Boogie, you got um who else was really good? Um that I can remember. Even if you think about the Bronx, Party Artie. I remember people like that, A G. That was with Showbiz. That was really good. Um, and then there was Lord this... Lord Finesse, too. Yeah, Lord Finesse. Then there was this group called The Bounce Squad. Uh, I remember um, when I was coming home from school in like the... In ninth grade or eighth grade, I used to always listen to Bounce Squad. So shout out to Doo-Wop and all of them. That was a group that had a lot of... Um, Snappy good. Puss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they was really fire. All right, let's get into the news. No, go ahead, Mo. Let's do it. No, hold on, let Mo. What you oh, gonna go say, ahead, Mo? Mo? Yeah, so so just like you know, to to build on that question, so 
And I know this is a broad statement or a broad question, but what separates some people from being able to transition and break through with that talent than others? And, and I say that that comes from a, a that's a loaded question because I get so many people who either send me music or, hey, can you pass this to here? And I just tell y'all again, like, I don't pass music. Yeah. That's not my relationship with these guys. Uh, but I be listening to people's stuff and I say, man, it's people who are good. But I was like, in the music world, in the athletic world, I know how people either, you know, make it or don't. Like, I can yeah. identify that. But just as a broad statement that may be like good feedback for people or something that y'all saying, like, what made you all you and then other people who may not have gotten through, if, if that like that makes sense? I went first last okay. time. Okay. Yeah, no, I was wondering. <laughs> I didn't want to jump in front of you. Pause. Hey, so, yo. I said pause. I like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what 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 makes uh, the difference between a lyricism, a guy that's a lyricist, and the people that normally break through? Sometimes you have that it that is just you don't lose that. You either got it or you don't have it. They could put a budget behind you. It's just different people that come in a room and they light up the room. And there's people that command attention. Other people don't command attention. And it's not just wearing yellow hair or blue hair or doing weird stuff is just you you know when there's one of those people in the room and and they're different they're unique they're not like nobody else like when i when i when i when i wasn't even speaking to cam and i would hear his records i'm like yo this nigga killer is going crazy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and at that point i was mad with the nigga i'm like yo that nigga killer is going crazy right there. One time I was coming from church, right? And he had the he had the pink um yeah, this when he was wearing the pink, he had the pink first. Somebody showed me the John's like, man, I wanna see that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how you were supposed to do it. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So and I said that because when you really have something, it don't matter if people know like you or not. They know you got something. Pause. And I think that's the difference. Like with today, a lot of people sound the same. When I heard Lil Wayne, he was different. And I think people don't put enough stock into being unique and being originals. The originals always last the, the time and the copies don't. Yeah, um, and thanks, Merle. I appreciate that, man. It's hard to get a compliment out this <laughs> I appreciate it, man. But um, yeah, like Mace made a great point. It's like a it factor. You know when you have it, like, and I'll just use Mace for an example, but I want to say another thing after this. It's like, you know, even White know, like Mace was Mace Murder, Mace Mussolini, Mace is saying, Mace used to say, I put, I lay you on the ground of grass with roses all around your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the type of time he's in. You know, when this nigga said another homicide right in front of mama's fried. <laughs> you know, that's the time he used to be on. And then he did, he got signed to Bad Boy and he did the 112 remixing. The bitches liked them, and Puff said, get that May Murder shit away from us, man. <laughs> you got to get that. We don't got time for laying a nigga in the ground to grass with the roses all around. That's that. when I discovered Mace. See, that's what Puff knew. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's when said, I, had him on, I had him on the wall. Yeah, yeah, and you was in Portland? Yeah. This is what Puff was saying. <laughs> this is, it's said like, that. we can infiltrate white America. <laughs> 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 that's, uh, and that's and that's what they can see that you got something different. But to me, just me personally, because I, I like lyrics and I sign artists, not no more, but I used to sign artists too. I ain't got time to sign artists because your problems become their problems. They fucked up. You you gotta <laughs> everything always. They happened. rent is your rent. <laughs> yeah, man. That shit is crazy. But um you just know if they have an impact. Like even when, you know, I'll use Jewels for example. You know, I met Jewels. He was spitting. I, I met him through a friend of mine named Tobe that I went to school with. And then when I started bringing him around, this is what I learned when I um I started to learn who kind of got it because I wasn't looking at, uh, and still don't, don't get this fucked up what I'm about to say, as saying, you know, the girls might like him. The females might like him. Because at that time, I would work with females, and they like, Cam, he, he's like that, and he's cute. 
Be cute. Fuck you talking about. You on his dick? <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> that, that was my mentality at the time. But you have to look at shit like that yeah. when you're signing artists. So I thought he had everything. Uh, he could rap. And not just rap. You got to know how to make songs. You know how to make hooks. You got to know yeah. how to count your bars. You, you get rappers, they don't know how to count their bars. They don't even know how many 16s or 8s or 12s or whatever. They don't even know how to count bars. And, and he had the whole package, Paul. So I, I liked him a lot. But uh, Mo, for me, what separates uh, good people, good good musicians, or how you say with rappers, good rappers from bad rappers, is knowing how to make songs. Mm -hmm. And of course, the it factor that me and Mace talked about. But I love people who know how to bounce on the beat and still compound their words. When I say compound their words, a lot of people don't pay attention to people who compound their words. So, like, if you sit there and be like, we're going to the fight tonight and it's be all right. Like, this is, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not really that <laughs> intricate. <laughs> you know? and, then, and we're going to be hype. Do what you like. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, compound their words, like I just said, when May said, Lay you in the ground of grass with roses, roses all around your ass pores. Like it's syllables that's all matching. You know what I'm saying? Like you tie yep. dynamite to the rhino type, but why no might find your sight? Sell the information for a dime or white. That mm. China, China. I'm behind the diner selling marijuana to a minor, minor elder felder looking for that shine I shine. That's old killer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> when you compound and, it could yeah. do, and still could bounce and it fit, I'd be like, niggas is nice. I don't be fucking yeah. with the one syllable rap rappers like that. Only maybe Prodigy didn't have to do that and I was a super duper fan. Outside yeah. of that, if you ain't really compounding your words and making it sound good and still could, you all right. You can make a song, but you ain't going in the lyricism book with me like that. You got to be able to compound your words. Yeah. So if that's the test to you, then how many West Coast hip hop artists fit that mold? Because I feel like as someone who grew up on the West Coast, that was much more of like an East Coast flavor. Right. Yeah. But at the West time, we respect the culture too. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We understand that 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 ain't what they grew up in and you got to mm -hmm. respect what they grew up in. And that's a great fucking question right there because... A lot of them don't compound their words, but it's also the environment that comes with it. Like when you listen to, we grew up listening to NWA. We was like, that nigga Easy E. He, he this nigga telling bitch to suck my dick and don't bite it. Like, <laughs> you know, we were like, nah. I know the nigga ain't just put out an album full of that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, like that. It was more more impressed on what the fuck these niggas was saying. Like, nah, get the fuck out of here, B. Snoop Dogg too, you know what I'm saying? The name of the album was Doggy Style. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dre, his shit was the chronic. Like, we was like, yo, these niggas is amazing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's how I looked at them as well. Yeah. That was and a great I, question. Yeah, and another part that make rappers gr good is that, Mo, is that they want to be better than everybody else. That's something you got to really search for these days. It's a lot of people just want to be one of the ones, but... But you could tell by us and other people that he named and I named, they're people that want to be the best. Dallas Cowboy Corner, Trayvon Diggs, and his soon-to-be baby mama, Joa Chavez? That's not a real name, right? It's Joy. Joy? That's what I thought. Uh, just broke up. She's confirmed it on Instagram to one of her commenters. Uh, for those who don't know, Trayvon's ex already has a 13-year-old with Little Bow Wow, Bow Wow, and a five-year-old with Future. This is a common thing. This is a thing. I don't understand how this is a thing. I feel like you see the pattern. The red flags are right there flashing. Little babies, you know, they want milk and all kinds of toys. And it's right there, right in front of your eyes. You see Future coming around. You see Bow Wow coming around, but you still do it. Uh, Mo, when will these guys learn and why? Why does this keep happening? How do they find them all also? <laughs> <laughs> Trolling gentrified right there. I, I don't I don't understand the thrill that these guys get for <laughs> kind of nasty ass thriller they get. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't, I, I just grew up with too much pride, too much ego, and I was raised by just different people. And like it, we used to, it, this is this is recreation. This is fun. This is fun buns. You know what I'm saying? That's all fun it is. Fun buns. And fun buns. That's all it is, man. It's recreation. And when I sat here, and and we when we had said something last year, he had took it personal. And a lot of guys, and it's a lot of just a lot of young dudes in general. And I go to speak to a lot of colleges, and sometimes when you when you're trying to educate and enlighten, a lot of these guys take things personal, like you're trying to criticize them. And it's like, no, we're not trying to criticize you, but when you are a, a phenomenal athlete, multi-million dollar man, there's a lot of people who have come before you who can say, hey, man, you know, we've been down the road with these type of women or these type of people, and this is how it's played out. And you also have a script of like how things have played out to this point. And then they get to a point where you're not with this girl and you have a baby with this girl. And I hope that the child comes out healthy and everything like that. And then you end up in a situation where you're like, you're going back to the tape and saying, man, I could have probably learned something from these dudes or listened to them. Like she was supposed to be fun, recreation, something to talk about. <laughs> and you're supposed to speed on. You know supposed what I'm to saying? choose Kentucky or one and done. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Or once in a while. That's it. Yeah. This entertainment. That's it. You, you wasn't but supposed to go in there and get a souvenir later. No. <laughs> yeah. That's nah, what he, man. he went to an amusement park and came out with a souvenir. That's what you're trying to say. <laughs> but it's yeah, a pattern. And, 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 and I... Yeah, I just hope he takes it, like, he took it personal last time, but I hope he has enough life experience right now. Like, I know we joke, right? But then I'm telling you, there's people who hit me up and say, yo, I've got, like, a, a something wise out of something that I've heard on the show, right? And I hope that he can just have an honest moment with himself and say, man, like, I fucked up, you know, and I've done something with somebody who I probably, if I could think about it again, I probably wouldn't do the same thing again. Yeah, he, he came at Cam, you know, like me, I, I personally, not personally, but you could say personally have been around her. So I know that she oh, she yeah. seemed to be a good person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 you, you, you was out. <laughs> nah, no, I mean, not me. I mean, you saw she was on the boat with Puff. Then she was with Trayvon. Then she was with nah, Bow Wow, you know, wow, you know yeah. um, Future. So... He had enough. He had enough um, images for him to know to make a better choice, and and I don't want to joke about it because this is, you know, once you get the baby involved, then you start saying it's your blessing. So you take that part of it and and take the blessing. So you got to take the lesson as well, and don't put yourself in that position again. I really do want to know: Is it like when you're dating a celebrity as a woman? And then, like, you go to a party and then you get, like, a couple of other celebrities' numbers? Like, how do you continue to grow well, let, your let, circle of influence of back burners? Well, let me give my opinion Sorry. real quick. Yeah, influence of back burners <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mace, Mace, real quick, because I want to chime in because I didn't get a take I'm on sorry. it. Now you're fine. Mace doesn't want to joke about it. I do, nigga. I told you. <laughs> you didn't want to listen to me. You talk shit about me when I said it, nigga. I told you, dumbass, nigga. I don't care about being your friend. Mo and Mace want to be nice about it. When I told you this shit, you told me I need to shut up. Uh, my old ass don't know what I'm talking about. Da, 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 da. Look at you now. Then you know what's more fucked up, nigga? Is that she did it on Instagram. You, she don't even got the courtesy to keep shit tucked away. Keep it low. Say, we're going to handle this like adults and co-parent. I told you, nigga. And you tried to play me. Don't get no attitude with me. Now you got to... Look, you was going to bump into niggas anyway. Now, one thing I will say is... I know Bow, I know Fuchs, she like, they ran into a couple females together before, <laughs> you know, they got, they got the same taste, I guess, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm my niggas too, but, you know, I don't think that Bow and Future are going to respect you as a baby father. They they probably clown. Look, the nigga Bow Wow called uh, Russell Wilson, Sierra's, um, I forget what the fuck he said, the way he said it, but he said, uh, See, Sierra, some shit basically said, like, hey, I can't remember when JD, when, when Jermaine Dupree was up here talking about us. Megan, make a long story short, you disrespectful, said Sierra is like little nigga, some shit like that. They don't give a fuck, my nigga. Look, what's her name? Joy? Joy. You know, I get that check and give about your business. You don't fuck with none of these niggas. I respect it. <laughs> you respect the jokes? Yeah, yo, because at the end of the day, look, I'm not saying she ain't never like none of these niggas. But look, because you know why? 
murder because I be sitting there <laughs> thinking about that shit and I be like, yo. And I'm not talking about presently. I'll meet a female and be like, yo, you know, my kids need a little bit of this and my my kids, uh, you know, camp is coming up and school is about to happen and, you know, if we could get a little bit of help and they need, you know, they want to go on a trip and this, that, that you know, I'm, I like you. I thought so, you know, I ain't got it like that for you like that. They ain't my kids. But at least she won't have them problems. You ain't going to have to hear that from her. Yeah. You ain't going to have to hear if she get in the next relationship that her kids need help doing anything. So I give you that joy. And I don't got no problem with what you're doing. <laughs> Niggas pull out game. They can't get out of there, huh? <laughs> 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 Shit juicy. <laughs> they cannot get out of that joint. <laughs> pull out game is weak. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Tris, but nigga tried to come for me. Yeah, yeah. It's not a sprint, homie. It's a marathon, man. And look where we're at. That's wild. I have a solution for um, all young athletes, and uh, I think it would help. It's called thought protection. And so you essentially at 17, 18, we'll call it 18. One real quick, do you say thought or thought? Thought. Okay, I'll just make so Like the acronym. Okay, got gotcha. Yeah, acronym, the thought protection. And you get a vasectomy at 18. But before you do, you uh, you donate all your sperm to separate locations around the world, like diversifying your assets. And you don't tell a soul. What? You don't tell a soul at all. And then when you're ready to settle down, then you figure out how to make it happen, whether that's reversing it, whether that's doing it artificially. There's all kinds of technology when you have that kind of money. And that saves you. And you don't tell her. And you don't pull out, and you hit her raw, and it's all good. And she thinks she's gonna catch you. She thinks she's gonna catch you, but guess what, bitch? You got got because I am snipped up. Hey, yo, let me tell you something. Yeah. Two, two things. That two, might be no, two things. Two things, right? Two things. First thing is, I can't let a nigga snip nothing down there. It feel too good. <laughs> I don't know. I know you're supposed to get the same feeling and ain't nothing connected, but I can't risk it. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> I've told bitches that I, that I tried to act like this pregnant by me that I had a vasectomy. And they's like, I was like, it ain't mine because I, I have a vasectomy. And they like, oh, word. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I say, yeah, yeah. yo, that's worth the blood. That's worth the blood, y'all. That's worth the blood. When I say blood, my cousin, yeah. not a gang. I swear on everything I love. Then, then you see, you could see on their face, like, oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't got no more to me. I, I go on my phone right now. <laughs> Paperwork. <laughs> 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 That's how you know the bitch. They be like, now they got to reconsider the she whole shit. She got who she been with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I did last last Halloween, y'all? Not last Halloween. Yeah. Last two April Fools ago. Three April Fools ago. Yeah. I said, yeah, I called a couple of my chicks I was messing with. April Fool. They all know it's April Fool. Yeah. I said, I just left the doctor. Is something you want to talk to me about? <laughs> they said what I said listen I'm not gonna play with you I just left the doctor <laughs> is it something you wanna talk to me about and they're like oh my god let me go get myself checked out and see what's going on bitch you out here <laughs> <laughs> They ain't even argue back. <laughs> you know, they're like, well, I don't know what's going on because I ain't been with nobody else. All three chicks I checked with was like, let me just go check, get checked out and see what's going on. Yeah, that's why that's why Trayvon got to play these games. When you, when you go into a female house that don't have a son, a brother, a significant other that they're usually dealing with, first thing you do if you're going to spend the night, check for peace stains around the toilet. Niggas should always splash it. <laughs> Boys, that's what I do. If I'm gonna take my socks off in your house, I'm checking if it's peace stains. If peace stains, and I ask you, your brother been here? You got a son? Nah, nah, nah. No. You got a boyfriend usually come over? No. Yo, they won't stop lying. They always fucking lie. <laughs> they always lying, bro. And they'll lie and lie and lie till you can't, they can't stop. You, you'll catch them. So I like that, man. I used it without even having to get that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to school some of you niggas on the little techniques to keep yourself safe out there. Yeah. 
<laughs> so. Yeah. That's a lot. Like you, you have a lot of tactics. Listen, I've been around a long time, man. <laughs> hey, yo, listen, man. I, I don't always have permission to talk about what me and Mace did, but shit started off early. <laughs> pre, pre preacher. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know, Red before Malcolm Max and all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shorty Red. Yeah, man. So, ESPN just put out a controversial list of the top ten quarterbacks in the NFL, taken from a survey of coaches executives and scouts the list is full of surprises uh besides patrick mahomes pat mahomes one joe burrow two josh allen three lamar jackson four matthew stafford five matthew stafford justin herbert six cj stroud seven aaron Rodgers, dusty bones and one half of an achilles at eight jared goff can't play outdoors at nine. And Dak Prescott, 10. A lot of takeaway from this list. Um, but the top takeaway is that Jalen Hurts, the 2022 MVP runner-up, not on the top 10. Is this le- list valid, Mo? I, I, one, I would put him, uh, and I put everybody over Dak Prescott. <laughs> you know, what I, I say that... Uh, Jokingly, but seriously, uh, just because I don't like the Cowboys. But um, on a more serious note, um, I, I was trying to view it how the NFL execs viewed it. We were probably thinking about pure quarterback. And there's a lot of people who don't view him as a as a pure quarterback. He may have the best chance of, of winning uh, next year, be it with the pieces with Saquon Barkley, the receivers that he has, and the team that they have coming back. Um, he may have a, a, the best chance with making it to the Super Bowl and, and, and going deep in the playoffs. But I was asking myself, outside of, Brack, outside of Dak Prescott, who would I basically put him over? And I couldn't say anybody. Uh, and that's no knocks to Jalen Hurts because I do believe that they'll go uh, deep into the playoffs. But when I was looking at just like pure quarterbacks and not as him as somebody who had the supporting cast with A.J. Brown and Paris Campbell and um, Devontae Smith, uh, I, I I would say the same thing. I would say that he probably wouldn't crack the top ten outside of Dak Prescott. Yeah, I, I definitely don't think Prescott should have been on this list um, at all. I think Jalen Hurts is somewhere like number eight. He would be number eight on my list. Um, I would start with Pat Mahomes. I definitely would um, go Joe, Joe Burrow second. I would put Lamar Jackson over um, Josh Allen. And Matthew Stafford wouldn't be five for me. Aaron Rodgers would be five for me. Um, six, I would go Justin Herbert, then C.J. Stroud, then, you know, the rest. I, I really don't like Jared Goff at all. Um, I know some people are high on him. Him and da- um, Dak, you could just take totally off that list for me. And I and I I just think they don't win when it's time to win. And that and that and that's just like a deal breaker for me. You can't say you're a good quarterback and you can't win big, big games. I would even put the um the quarterback of the 49ers over Dak and Jarrett because he's not on that list as well. He's on CBS list. It's a few different lists out. But yeah, oh, okay. Yes. But no, you're right. The list you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the list I'm talking about. Right. Yeah, I just heard he wasn't on it. And he would be over Jarrett and Dak for me because he was able to manage the game. Um, I'm sitting there looking at this while I'm talking to you guys. I got a real problem with, and I think he's talented. I think he's going to be probably a top five in the next year or two. But we got to give, we. I'm not putting C.J. Stroud on this list. Like, he had a sensational <laughs> year last year. It was, it was sensational. But God damn, yo, like, my nigga, we always be a prisoner of the fucking moment. Do it again, nigga. Like, goddamn, you can't just have one good year and nigga make the top 10. Now, I'm even going to put Dak ahead of CJ Strout because, listen, Dak has years of, of playing football, and even though they haven't got over the hump and have, haven't really done shit in the playoffs, CJ Strout played one year, bro, and you got him over fucking Jalen Hurts, uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, 
Dak Prescott, and I'm no Dak Prescott fan by look by far at all. I'm I'm definitely not one of them niggas. But everything else, I, I just can't. And I think he's going to be sensational. But you got to do it again. I, that's my only problem with this with this list. Um, however, you want to put everybody in order. That's your your your, t- your cup of tea. But I think Jalen Hurts definitely needs to be on this list. I don't know what order he should be in, but I'm taking C.J. Stroud out and putting him 11 before I put him on the top list, 10, 10 list after one year. And listen, you my nigga too. I fuck with you. The only thing we want we want to tell you is same thing we told Trayvon. Be careful, <laughs> nigga. And Barrow Scooby <laughs> making you take her home. And that's all we had to tell you. You're going to be sensational. But I can't put you on the top 10 list based upon one year. ESPN's list also groups Burrow, Lamar, and Josh Allen together. Lamar actually below Josh Allen. Um, Burrow has been to a Super Bowl. He's the only one to beat Mahomes. Lamar, two-time MVP, cannot seem to win the big game. Josh Allen, great regular season numbers, just lost his number one receiver. Mo, how long can these three go and maintain top five status without winning a Super Bowl? Whew, that's a, that's rough. Uh, I actually think one of those three, or one of those three, and including um, uh, what is the name, Pat Mahomes, will win the Super Bowl. And I'm actually um, I'm betting on Joe Burrows to be the one to get back there and do it the best. I think at some point, uh, if he stays healthy, and I see that they put some pieces around him with the offensive line, I think that the Bengals, just my personal opinion have the ability to, to to make another championship run and and get Joe Burrows back there. Uh, I don't think Josh Allen's going to do it up in, in um, uh, what is it called, Buffalo. Um, and, and Lamar Jackson, you know, uh, what can you say? Lamar Jackson is, I don't, don't want to say he's similar to Dak Prescott and needing to win that, um, needing to go on a championship run and get there. They were just a game away. And uh, who did they lose? I think they lost to Detroit. Or they were getting ready to play Detroit, something like that. I forget my my my, my thoughts have jumbled uh, thinking about last season, but um, I, I don't know. I, I think I think it's going to happen with Joe Burrows. I think that's what I'm saying, and I don't know where Lamar Jackson and and Josh Allen may fall. Uh, there's other kids coming up who may take those top five spots, but my my bet is that Joe Burrow will be the one to make it happen, and you know we won't even have this conversation. Yeah, I totally I totally disagree with you, Mo. I think. In the next two years, they they will stay on this list for about two more years, and then they will realize they was just in the Pat Mahomes era. That you you were supposed to get one, but you was just in an era with an extraordinary quarterback. Not that you couldn't have been better on some nights, but this this is one of those times where you just you in the league at the wrong time. Actually agree with both of you guys that was going to be my exact take like they're kind of like uh charles barkley uh, <laughs> reggie miller patrick ewing it was joy. john stockton you're just in the michael joy never yeah. and that's kind of what's going on mo the Ohio shit is, is seeping through the screen today, nigga. I feel like <laughs> I love it, though. I love it. What part of Ohio is uh, Joe Burrows from? Well, he's from, it's, it's three connections. He's from Athens, went to Ohio State. He ended up going to LSU, obviously, but right. he playing for Cincinnati. He's from Athens. Okay, Athens, all right. Yeah, but um, <laughs> listen, I, I want to agree with you. Trust me, man. I was arguing with Mace about Joe Burrows. Because yeah. still to this to this day, Joe Burrow's on a one on one against Patrick Mahomes is still up. If when they're playing one on one, my only problem with Joe Burrow is health, and I can't sit here and say this for other players and not say it for him. When I say the best ability is availability, and when you're not available, you're just not available, and he's not available more times than not uh, when it counts. Like you said. Look, we think about this. First season, the guy hurt. Second season, come back, he goes to the fucking Super Bowl. The next season, he comes back, he's hurt. Then he comes back and tries and tries to hop around last year because he went and got that two hundred and something million, seventy five million dollar contract, if I'm not mistaken. So he's never there. When he's healthy, he gets to the Super Bowl. But it's not. It's about health. I'm not saying uh, 
he he can't be just as good as Patrick Mahomes. But if you're not healthy, I can't compare it. So uh, it might be the Patrick Mahomes era. We need to figure out how to keep Joe Burrow healthy. So I can't agree with you, Mo. Mo, what's the difference between Josh Allen and Dak Prescott? What is the difference? Um, Josh Allen, it, well, Josh Allen is going to get more, less scrutiny because he plays in the Buffalo market. Um, but they, 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 they're both the same people to me. You know, you don't get it done. You don't go to the big game. Um, it's, it's the same people to me. You don't think it's turnovers by Dak? No, Josh. Josh Allen throws a shit ton of turnovers. Like if you look at if you look at his his uh, criticism, what they've said over just over the last few seasons that his turnover ratio uh, in comparison to throwing is what basically makes him horrible. They believe that uh, he's Cam Newton two point He's just white and he just doesn't get the criticism for it. Like I didn't want to take the conversation in that direction. That's why I did the politically correct thing. But they just believe <laughs> like he's a, a, a poor man's Cam Newton. You know what I'm saying? And um, but they don't believe that he gets criticized the same way because he's white and a, a lot of the things that Cam Newton did, um, like he's just a, a a less version of it. And you know, Dak, you know, you know, we just know just if you black and you play quarterback, there's gonna be a heavier criticism around your intellect and around if you can execute and run the offense and you know, can you win a significant and big moments? And that's kind of what I really wanted to say. I, I probably should have just said it what it was. But that's what they, you know, really believe about yeah. what they believe about Dak. But with Josh Allen, you know, it, it's just this belief, you know. And I, I don't even know if we would, if we'll ever get past it, even with all these black quarterbacks in the league now. But it's looked at if you're tall, you're white, and you know, you you can conduct an interview, a post game interview, well, and answer all your your token questions that you know people have some sort of like um, some grace for you. You know what I'm saying? But if you have you know, any level of blackness and they can tie just your race to your performance. And I know we, we always like to shy away from it. And, you know, we use these like one off examples of, um, you know, of, uh, of people that we've said, oh, you know, Lamar is a great quarterback and we try not to tie his success, his athletic ability. Like, shit, if you want me to talk about it, that's Jalen Hurts thing. You know, we don't want to we don't want to label him as a quarterback. If you look at that list, it's full of white guys. You know what I'm saying? And it's not to say that, you know, black quarterbacks can't perform the same way, but we, we still get a knock. You know, if, if, if I was going to do it, I look at the um, who wrote the article and how they feel and what narrative are, are they trying to push? You know, when I when I when even saying this, this kind of got my mind going. To different. Yeah. <laughs> you get all coming from, man. <laughs> well, let us know in the comments what you think of the ESPN latest quarterback rankings. Who should have been left off? Who should be in? Is Josh Allen the same as Dak Prescott? Were you bored by most take? That's all the time that we have for today. Thank you guys all sincerely for allowing me to join you. This has been this has been a monumental moment as a hip hop fan, as someone who had Mace in his poster on my wall as a little kid. My first concert ever was a No Way Out tour. My favorite, I grew up listening to Cam. I said to Larry, my favorite song was on fire tonight, which is like full circle the way you were saying. Hey, I had a test. So I appreciate you guys for having me. And as, uh, as always- We're gentrified. We're gentrified. <laughs> Anytime, man. We appreciate Anytime. that. A great job. Everything nigga super size, two big necks, like when they doing them two for five.